everybody, welcome to PizzaCast episode 15, the official podcast of PizzaExtremeTeam.com. Broadcasting <laughs> live from Hobby Central in Delaware, Ohio, in front of our normal audience of Warhammer figurines. And I've got a smaller stack of magic cards over yeah, here. Yeah, yeah, we're, we're doing good. plenty of chatter from the back room. <laughs> oh yes, it's alright. Audience. Yeah, our live audience who's not listening. <laughs> I'm your handsome co-host, Cody, with the dashing good looks. And I'm Sam Dunham, boy detective. And we're sure to member. Yeah, again, again. That's, that's all right, though. But yeah, we're still going to talk about stuff. <laughs> yeah, we're going to get into a big section of what we've been checking out these past couple weeks, uh, do some news articles, and then, you know, if we have time, we might talk about, I don't know, something about a rat buying Star Trek or something. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> That was okay, and then That's it went okay. off yeah. the rails. Yeah, it's all right. We're tired, folks. Yeah. We've been, we've been both working hard and... And missed. hardly working on yes. the site. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it smells like pancakes. It does. Do you smell pancakes? Yeah. Oh, man. Who's making pancakes? Something. That smells good. <laughs> Totally derailed by the smell of pancakes. <laughs> the, the smell of possible pancakes. <laughs> All right. So, uh, yeah. So, uh, let's get into some of the stuff that we've been uh, doing this past couple weeks. Cody, you got anything? Oh, let's see. What have I been doing? I've been watching. Did we talk about panty and stocking on here last time? I don't think we talked about it on air. I think we, we didn't talk about it on air. Yeah. I've been trying to watch that, but I just can't get into it. Really? I, I mean, I like how it looks. You know, the you animation do. is good, <laughs> but uh, I just, I don't like it. Yeah? I've watched, like, four episodes, and then, like, I don't know what it is. I feel like I should like it. Oh, uh, yeah, okay. I I know that feeling. I know that feel, bro. <laughs> I know that feel. Like, sometimes it just feels like it's crude just for the sake of being crude, and I don't like that. Yeah. But, I mean, it's not like I don't laugh at it at all. I occasionally get the chuckle out of me, but... Um, oh, yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Um, maybe I'll keep trying. Yeah, you know, <laughs> give... Is, is it costing you anything? No. Well, then keep on trying. What the heck? <laughs> I really want to like it. Yeah. That might be part of your problem if you just kind of relax with it, you know? <laughs> relax. Ease into it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Oh. Ease into panty and stocking. <laughs> oh, this is a great show. This is a great show <laughs> yeah. already. Yeah. Um, well, I've been um, I've been doing quite a bit now that I'm thinking about it. Um, first thing I want to talk about real quick. Um, I have delved into the world of MMOs for the first time. Um, I've been playing this game, um, Champions Online, which is, uh, originally was a um, pen and paper, a D&D style um, superhero game. And they've uh, they've converted it years ago. I mean, this is this is an older game. Yeah, it used to be pay to play. And yeah, now, now it's, it's free, free to play. play. Although, I'll tell you, I did put down for one month of pay to play just to kind of unlock a few things and get the full experience. And uh, you know what? It's all right. Um, I It has, it natively works with the uh, Xbox controller. Oh, nice. So, um... I mean, there are there are some things that you have to use your mouse for. Yeah. But for the most part, it works with your. That's cool. So it, it turns it from like you know the um, carpal tunnel inducing you know keyboard and mouse style. Push one, things. push two. Yeah. Push four, yeah. like MMOs. Right. Stuff. It, 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 it instead it turns into like a third person open world kind of mission based game. Cool. Yeah. I and, might have to get into that. Yeah. Then. And the uh, the the player care the player creation is actually really cool. And one of the things with uh, if you purchase a month of the gold um thing it's like 15 bucks you can uh you know it unlocks more you know archetypes like you know fire based and like gun based and like you yeah. know stuff like that it actually unlocks one called freeform where you can actually pick and choose from different things oh, all kinds of different power yeah. sets and stuff yeah and uh it, it doesn't just start with your character creation every time you level up and get a power you can actually choose from any of the Oh, any, any of, of the, the archetypes. It's yeah, nice. yeah. So, um, so if you got, so if any of our listeners play this, and you're on between, you know, 
10 and noon on a weekday this is usually when I play. <laughs> um, and you run across a character named Sergeant Sasquatch. Sergeant who, Sasquatch. Who is a police officer who is also a Bigfoot. <laughs> Nice. Yeah, he's got this aviator glasses and his cop <laughs> uniform, and yeah, it's actually really cool because he's a he's a tank. He's like a beast tank with like the claws and stuff. Yeah. But I gave him two pistols so he can actually like from a distance like he actually has ranged attacks which tanks don't get. Yeah. You know, and uh, so yeah, if you run into me, you know, stop by, say hi. Go on a quest. Go on a quest. <laughs> I don't know. I will say they, um, the Champions Online, they just had a major update where they've added uh, vehicles into it. Oh, cool. Not it. a lot of – well, I guess MMOs do have a lot of vehicles, but not yeah. a lot of modern-day ones. Yeah, no, this is this is definitely, like, set modern-day. And I mean, they're not, like, cars and motorcycles. They're all, like, hovering type. Ah. Uh, but it's, like, hover bikes and um, Batman-style bat planes or Nighthawk planes. Nighthawk <laughs> And, uh, like, heavy-armored, like, flying tanks. Cool. It's actually really cool. Kind of a pain in the ass to get though. You had because you get parts for them for free, just by beating enemies. But you have to buy for a hundred game points, which is money, yeah, real money, real money points. The <laughs> a key to unlock the box that the part is in, the randomly. Oh. So it's like a blind bag part generator thing that you have to spend. It's kind of like you a know Team Fortress. a couple bucks per part, and that's how they get you. Yeah, it's like in Team Fortress, you can get locked boxes, and then you have to buy keys. Yeah, to that's them. exactly. Yeah, that's it. That's it right there. But uh, but for the most part, you know, I'd suggest I'd I'd recommend it. It's actually pretty cool. The free to play, you get a handful, like a half dozen different standard um, player types and two uh, player slots, so you can have two active. Wow, that's that's more generous than most games. Mostly yeah, you just get the one. Yeah. And you know what's a good free to play game is uh, Dungeons and Dragons Online. Oh, really? It's actually really good. Oh, cool. Because like the dungeons actually have like interactive stuff in them and puzzles. Oh, wow. So yeah, you actually have to do things instead of just walking into a hole in the ground and fighting monsters. Well, no, there's there's like there's stuff with that with um, champions too. I mean, they're like you know, a lot of it is you have to talk to certain people at a certain time and stuff like that. But I mean, there have been you know move things around and you know yeah there was a one of the dungeons and dragons dungeons had like this dungeon with tiles on the floor and you had mm -hmm. to line them upright so that something would flow through them oh, okay okay and, like real video game stuff <laughs> yeah no i mean yeah that sounds really cool i mean this has you know some stuff kind of like that too and it's it's actually really good it is kind of buggy at times i've had to log out but there's a good thing where if you log out for over 24 is it 12? I think it's 12 hours. It'll reset you back to, a, like, a main respawn point. So oh, nice. if, you get, yeah. if you get locked in a spot like I had with uh, with one of my characters from before, um, just log out, and it kind of resets you. And that's cool. I like that. I also got – I played uh, Dungeons & Dragons online early enough in, in the uh, – Time okay, I don't know. Early enough to to get Binwin Bronze Bottom as a player character. Name. Nice, <laughs> nice, excellent. It's probably gone now because I haven't touched it in forever. <laughs> but no, that's excellent. Very cool. Yep. And I haven't run across too many trolls or idiots playing, which is huh. good. Yeah. I think it's because everyone's over on DC. DC Universe, DC yeah. Universe. That's a good game, too, though. Yeah, I like that uh, game. You know, I'm sure it is, but <laughs> I'd if I'm not going to be able to play as Green Lantern and Superman, I'd rather just not have them around. <laughs> That's true. That's a good Constantly point. taunting me. <laughs> <laughs> With their superiority. Yeah. No. Well, you can, they have, you can be a Green Lantern. Yes, but you can't be the be Green the Lantern. The Green Lantern. Yeah. You can hang out with them, fight some guys. <laughs> oh, that sounds like a great time. It's like, hey, let's hang out with this, with the more popular kids. <laughs> uh, yeah. It plays really action-y, though, too. Yeah. Because it's designed for PlayStation 3 also at the okay. same time. So. Yeah. I mean, if you have a PlayStation 3, there's no reason to not get it. It's yeah, right. free. Oh, see, there you go. Okay, well, there you go. Yeah. yeah. It just takes about three days to download it. <laughs> yeah, that's that's what I ran into with um, Champions. Um, 
luckily they actually give out a um, legal torrent of the file, so you can actually pop it in like uTorrent and like. Oh, cool! Yeah, yeah that's faster than it mm-hmm. would be just regular. Just, yeah, it actually took a. It took about twelve <laughs> hours because it was like, fifteen. 15 gig? Jeez. It's it's big. I mean, it's big, but I mean, it's very... The graphics are very nice. Very, very they nice. They won't be on my computer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, okay, well, enough about MMO, so... Oh, uh, what else? So, yeah, you're next. Been playing the uh, My Little Pony iPhone game. <laughs> oh, yeah? <laughs> How are those ponies? They're good. Yeah. Actually, it's not the best game in the world. Really? Like, it's one of those, like, city-building games, like, you know, like, not like SimCity, but, like, kind of like Farmville. Oh, really? Type of resource management things mm. with a pony paint job, but the pony paint job does a lot for it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's it's really good, really high production values. There's voice acting. There, the ponies are 3D. Hmm. And, but the gameplay is just the, you know... Place and buildings and micromanaging ponies. <laughs> interesting, very interesting. And it's free too. Oh well, there you go. That's, it just got bumped up on my list then. Yeah. <laughs> you know, if something's free, it's automatically like in the top yeah. top twenty five percent of of something I want to check out. I mean, I can't stop playing it, so yeah. it's not bad. <laughs> yeah. No, I've um, I've actually seen online someone some uh, like a group of dedicated bronies are uh, converting a uh, Pokemon ROM. Into, oh, that's cool. And into ponies, <laughs> like doing little tiny sprites of them and like everything. Yeah, because of course they would. Because because of, of course they would. And why not? You know, there was a BronyCon in Strongsville, Ohio, in September. Yeah, wasn't uh, Andrew WK? Was he? Yeah, I think he was. Oh, man. I, th- I think he did a dissertation on <laughs> on ponies and partying. <laughs> <sighs> As an aside. Andrew WK is probably one of the best people to follow on Twitter. Yeah, if oh you're yeah. on Twitter, you gotta follow him because every th- it's every th- post he does is about partying. It's never not about partying. Not. <laughs> yeah. But they had like almost all the voice actors from the show there because really? I watched a, vo- a panel of the voice actors <laughs> on YouTube. A pony panel. A pony panel <laughs> on YouTube, and it, it was pretty entertaining. Cause, yeah. You know, it's always entertaining to see voice actors do. So it was thing. a pretty polished pony panel. Yeah, it was pretty polished. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> Oh. oh, that's it. I'm done. All right. I, I quit. <laughs> I quit the podcast. <laughs> Drop the mic. Yeah. Ah, out of here. Slam. All right. But uh, the beginning, everybody was there except Tara Strong. And they're like, why is she late? What's going on? Where's Tara Strong? And then, you know, five, ten minutes later, she comes in fully dressed as Twilight Sparkle. Oh, my God. Complete cosplay. She's got a unicorn horn in her head. She's got the wig. <laughs> She's wearing purple. Oh, she has an armband with a cutie mark on it. That's and awesome. And leg warmers. Ni- oh, nice. Yeah, nice. it was awesome. That's pretty great. And I'm like, darn it, I would have went to this. Yes. <laughs> like, yeah. yeah, same here. Oh, yeah. Like, I'm not the world's biggest brony or anything, but I would have, for a chance to, you know, meet all the voice actors and stuff, like, I would have Why not? Yeah, why not? But I'm sure they'll do it again next year. Assuming that it doesn't die out by then. Yeah. Because it's burning pretty hot. It's very faddish. Yeah. Well. Oh, well, you know. It just has the last number another six months or so, and then, you know. Yeah. It'll be good. Yeah, and the new season started up. Yeah, you're just te- on Monday. Yeah, you're telling me a little bit about yeah. that before we turn I mean, the mics I've, on. I've only I've only watched the first of the two part episode that they did mm-hmm. on Monday. It was good. Oh yeah, it was you know standard ponies. <laughs> nice, nice. There was a couple songs, which is always you know. It's always good. Good, I guess. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they're they're pretty high quality musical numbers. Cool. Spike the oh, Dragon yeah. does ballet in the background, and it's hilarious. <laughs> nice. Nice. But uh, they're kind of hinting at that maybe Twilight is special for some reason and mm. some kind of chosen pony. I don't know. Oh, okay. But I don't know if they reveal it at the end of the the two-parter or not, or if it's going to be a continuing thing. 
Hmm. What is it with these kids shows and depth and continuing plots? I don't stuff? know. I don't know. It's great. <laughs> yeah, I think it's. I think it's great. I think kids need to learn about continuity and world building and that yeah. kind of stuff. We didn't yeah. get that kind of stuff back. Actually, in the day. we kind of did. I mean, you well, know, yeah, X Men cartoon, X Men cartoon, and, Transformers. Yeah. Um, to a lesser extent, GI Joe a little yeah, bit. Yeah, a little bit. I mean, if if something happened in one, they would re- at least reference it. In, yeah. You know, in a, a few episodes down the line. I mean, yeah. I mean, shoot, Spider Man, the animated series, was nothing but continuity. Yeah. Not the 1967 Spider Man. Oh, oh, no. <laughs> Miss Brandt. Miss Brandt. I love that show. Yeah. Oh, man. <laughs> terrible, terrible animation. The same five swing animations <laughs> yeah. for Spider Man every time. <laughs> yeah. Like lazily swinging away yeah. at the end. <laughs> The one where he's constantly swinging towards the screen. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. But it, I guess in shows that are also funny. Oh yeah, yeah. Because like I don't know, there was no there was no character depth in Animaniacs. <laughs> Not really. Yeah. No. Tiny Toons didn't have continuing. <laughs> Everyone, character well, they, they had they. Not so much continuing character histories, but they did have a handful of two-parter episodes. Yeah. And, I mean, they did stick with the idea that they are the the kids or relatives of, you know... The Looney Tunes. The Looney Tunes, yeah. Yeah. I wonder if that show's good. I haven't watched it in so long. Tiny Tunes? Yeah. Um, you know, I hope, I would imagine it stands up pretty well. I mean, I mean yeah. Animaniacs does. Oh, and, without uh, a doubt. Freakazoid definitely oh, does. Oh, absolutely. Well, I mean, uh, Tiny Toons, it was uh, written by Paul Dini. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so I mean, uh, I mean, a lot of it's going to stand up. I mean, nice. <laughs> I think Mario just died. <laughs> uh, but no, I mean, um, if not for Animaniacs, we wouldn't have gotten Batman the Animated Series because that's where Paul Dini and uh, Bruce Timm met Start, each other. Yeah. yeah, that's where they that's where they met each other and started collaborating on it. Is the Superman animated series, is that good? It is okay. But it's not as good as Batman. No. Well, I mean, it's hard to beat the Batman animated series. At least the first two seasons of it. After that, it kind of dropped off. But uh, the Superman's okay. It's good to watch if you're planning on getting into Justice League. Because um, a lot of the characterization of they kind of do a lot of characterization shorthand with Batman and Superman on Justice League because they kind of assume you've seen a handful of the previous series because they loosely tie together. Um, but no, it's it's worth checking out. Some of the yeah, it's actually um, a lot of the Lex Luthor stuff as ref- uh, from Justice League references back to Superman stories. Hmm. Like, there's a whole series where uh, Lex Luthor and Brainiac kind of merge into one character. And it has roots from the um, Superman animated series. I've been thinking about watching that. Yeah, it's 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 worth watching. I mean, um, if nothing else, there's uh, a couple episodes where uh, Lobo, one of my favorite unknown characters, shows up. And he's voiced by Brad Garrett. <laughs> Raymond! <laughs> oh... <laughs> Everybody loves Raymond. <laughs> now everybody stop listening. Yeah, They're we're done. Just doing bad Brad Garrett impressions. <laughs> this is the worst show. Oh, yeah. No. <laughs> They've stopped listening episodes ago. <laughs> Why are we even do it now? Let's no, not let's not get into that because then we'll give up. No, okay. Um <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> I've uh, I've actually been uh, watching I watched a handful of movies um, recently. Um, first off, I rewatched uh, Fifth Element, which great movie, a great movie. You know, I hadn't watched it in a couple years, and it is probably one of my favorite um, science fiction uh, action films to come out of the uh, you know late twenty first century or twentieth century. It is really, really good, really dense. Yeah. And I mean, it's and I mean, it's not. It's it's action packed with a serious storyline, but it's not all serious. Yeah, there's, like there's, like Blade Runner is, and like you there's know, some, some lightheartedness. There's in there, there is a lot of lightheartedness in it. I mean, 
And I mean, it's it's one of the few movies where Bruce Willis plays a character that's not the best at what he does <laughs> and totally on top of the situation no matter what. He's closer to Die Hard 1 Bruce Willis and not <laughs> Die Hard 3 Bruce Willis. <laughs> or even Expendables, Expendables 2 Bruce Willis. Oh, God, yeah. But uh, and I forgot how m- much of the film had Chris Tucker in it. It does have a lot of him, A lot it? of Chris Tucker. A lot of Chris Tucker! <laughs> ah! <laughs> screaming! I'm screaming at stuff and there's good fun! Ah! Chris Tucker! I don't know. Uh, now everyone's yeah. turned off the, the podcast. Yeah. I've screeched in their ears. Um, <laughs> but no, really, really good. And um, the design of it alone is oh, yeah. worth checking out. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's based off of uh, a French artist uh, who went by the name Mobius. He did a lot of stuff for uh, old um, heavy metal magazines. Well, yeah, the, the plot is this, basically the same as the first short in the heavy metal movie. Yeah. Yeah. and Which uh, is a fantastic movie also. Uh-huh. And uh, just excellent, top to bottom. You know, I haven't seen the second Heavy metal movie. Heavy I've metal only, 2000? I've only seen not, bits and pieces of it on Cinemax at, it's not great. <laughs> at midnight yeah. when I was a kid and shouldn't have been watching it. <laughs> the best time to watch Sorry, heavy metal. Mom. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, it's not. Uh, heavy metal 2000 is not great. <laughs> the first one's amazing. The first, I love one is, it. the first one's excellent. It's a choice film. But... Uh, no, I've been watching that. Um, should I just go ahead and rattle through these real quick? Because, sure. I mean, there's only a couple more. Um, watched uh, On the flip side of Fifth Element, I watched a truly awful film from the mid-'80s called DC Cab, starring Adam Baldwin of Firefly, Flame, um, Firefly fame. Firefly <laughs> flame. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> uh, Firefly, Firefly fame. He's in that. He's in that show. That show that people like, yeah. and um, Mr. T, <laughs> and Gary Busey, <laughs> and just a handful of other tr- equally terrible actors. Um, and I mean this. I mean it's a pretty disjointed film that doesn't really get a plot till the last twenty minutes. Nice. But it's. I mean the whole thing is based around you know DC Cab is the animal house of cab companies in Washington, D.C. <laughs> and they uh, they decide to get some money and turn around their, their cab, their cabbies. And then, you know, mishaps and shenanigans. shenanigans. And it's like they had a movie plotted out. And then, so they would go and they, you know, have plot and stuff. And then out of nowhere, they would just, everyone would just kind of stop and let Gary Busey ramble something incoherently. <laughs> and then the movie will pick up again. <laughs> because this movie came out shortly after Busey had his accident, his motorcycle accident and scrambled his brain. <laughs> so he is at the height of crazy. <laughs> he makes no sense. Nice. Just absolutely no sense. I mean, I don't even have anything in front of me here to, to you know, relate, you know, any lines or anything. But he just doesn't make sense. <laughs> hey, I'm Gary Busey. My teeth are a bit a little bit too big for my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> I wish you guys could see the face I'm making yeah, while that's, I'm doing. That's yeah, a lot that's, of the impression. That's, is the that's face. part of the impression. <laughs> yeah, you know, I was at Korea once, and some I can't even remember a line, but it was like just ridiculous, <laughs> yeah. just rambling. How can you remember nonsense? Yeah. <laughs> like, that's how bad it is. is it it's, it's nonsense. It doesn't make enough sense to stick into your head coherently. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Exactly. And, uh, well, the last film I watched was um, a movie, uh, mid-90s, called um, Blind Fury, starring uh, an actor named Rudger Hauer. Most people would know him as the main bad guy from Blade Runner, um, playing a Vietnam War vet who was blinded by a mortar and stranded in, in Vietnam and trained in the art of, uh, of swordplay and kung fu by a tribe of Vietnamese Native Americans, essentially. <laughs> Vietnamese Native Americans. Yeah, they, they, I mean, you know, they live in teepees. <laughs> Look 
at all these teepees <laughs> that we have. <laughs> yes. Yes. Uh. <laughs> But no, he makes he you know years later he gets back to America and you know he has this walking stick that he's comically beats people over the head with <laughs> and then reveals that it's also a sword that he cuts people with. Nice. There's a scene early in the movie where he play like straight up cuts a dude's hand off, just like clean. It's like just like, like Star Wars. Line. Just <laughs> yeah, like Star Wars. Yeah, <laughs> and uh, the the whole plot is he's trying to get the son of a Vietnam War buddy. Back to his buddy with mobsters after him, led by the former boxer known as Randall Tex Cobb. <laughs> the best name ever. <laughs> Randall Tex Cobb. Yep. You don't mess with somebody who has that for a name. No. No, you don't. But, uh, no, it's um, it's pretty bad. But, <laughs> you know, it's, uh, it's, it's at least watchable. And, you know, it's... It's like they're trying too hard to be funny <laughs> at times, and the the kid that um, Howard's trying to save is a little shit. I mean, he is just the <laughs> he is just the worst kid, and he's constantly like pulling pranks on uh, on a, on the blind guy. So the blind guy, you know, because he's almost like dare, he's like weird ninety mid nineties high waisted daredevil. <laughs> high waisted daredevil. Yeah, like his pants are up to his nipples, basically. <laughs> Um, and he's he's constantly you know playing you know going oh I'm blind but I'm not you know I'm not a weak kid weak guy I I'm handy capable <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> and uh, so I mean it's a lot it's a lot of prat falls and a lot of stupid yeah. crap and then they try to squeeze in like some heartfelt stuff into the middle of it like the the blind guy is co- is like truly cares for this little kid and I know what they're trying to do. They're trying to make it look like, oh, you know, these, you know, protector, protecty kind of thing. It comes off very pedophilic. <laughs> like, it looked like in some scenes there were some things going on that shouldn't have been going on. Oh. And I mean, totally, you know, I don't think, I know that wasn't the point, but it just came off really kind of, <laughs> I don't know. That's all I have, man. I just... What is that Western? It's, it's like a psychedelic Western. Psychedelic Western. You're probably gonna have to cut this out. <laughs> it's a oh El Topo. Okay. For some reason, I thought of, I just thought of that. Okay. I need to watch that again. Yeah. The, the the pedophilic thing made me think of the beginning when he's riding in on a horse with a naked kid. <laughs> Oof. Yeah. yeah. Ugh, yikes. But that quote that you are a man now. Bury this picture of your mother and your favorite toy. (laughs) (laughs) It's like the first line in the movie. (laughs) Oh, yeah. Yep. That's good. That is a weird movie, but it's cool. Yeah. I have Mm. a whole queue of movies that I have that I need to watch that I haven't yet. See, I've, I've recently realized that I've been paying for Netflix and not using it. So I ha- so I've decided I need to start watching. I've been forcing myself to sit down and watch movies because I've been. I mean, I, they've been getting eight bucks from me for the last couple months and for nothing. Yeah, I mean, I I pay eight bucks a month to fall asleep watching GI Joe and He Man. Yeah, See, at, least, at least you're at least you're using it. I wasn't even using it there for a while. Yeah, yeah. but uh, I got what, safety not guaranteed. Okay. Gotta watch that. It's got Aubrey Plaza in it, which is why I got it. But, oh, of course, yeah. Oh, well, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but it's about that. Remember that ad that went viral on the internet about something about I need somebody with their own weapons to go on, on a time travel exper- experiment with me. Oh, yeah, I remember yeah, that. Yeah, it's about that. Really? Yeah. Oh, wow. So it looks cool. So we live in a world where there is they're making movies based on YouTube. Videos, yeah, and just image, just a viral image. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So I mean, there was that. Um, I think it was called Badass or something. Uh, it was Danny Trejo, and it was this, it was like a fictionalization of. I guess there was an old video. There's a video on YouTube of an old guy who beats the living shit out of this uh, guy on a bus <laughs> who was picking on him, and it went viral. <laughs> and they made a movie with Danny, Danny Trejo, Trejo as the old guy. <laughs> 
where the first half is him, you know, he's an old vet, war vet, you know, he beats the guy, beats up this guy. In the second half, he becomes a vigilante hero. <laughs> That's pretty good, actually. Yeah, it's well, yeah, it's it's okay. It's not the best, yeah. but it's 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 pretty good. It's good for what it is. But uh, yeah, that's. But no, anyway, yeah, safety net guaranteed. Yeah, that sounds that sounds good. I haven't seen it yet. I have a uh, Shogun Assassin. Okay, that that is good. Yeah, that is good. The the stuff that they took from the Lone Wolf and Cub series. Yeah. Yeah. Which I've been meaning to watch for a long time. Ever since they name dropped it in Kill Bill, I've been oh, meaning yeah. to watch it. Uh, the the first couple are really good. I do like. Um, I, li- I haven't seen the Shogun Assassins. I've seen Lone Wolf and Cub, and those are pretty good. I don't know how much they've cut out and how much they haven't. But I mean, they're like two and a half hour movies, yeah. so they might have just been trimmed down a little bit. But uh, but yeah. But yeah, I got a lot of movies to watch. Maybe I'll t- maybe I'll watch one and talk about it next time. Hey, there we go. Yeah. <laughs> Making plans. Yeah. <laughs> oh, let's see. What else have I done? Um, Angry Birds Star Wars. I wrote a review of that. Right. Yeah. A game that surprised me with how good it is. Because <laughs> I'm not a big Angry Birds guy. I mean, no. I love Star Wars. Yeah. But I don't really care for Angry Birds, and I thought it would be a stupid cash-in piece of crap. But they actually have more respect for Star Wars than most Star Wars things do. That's good. So it's so Han's not like dancing in the background with Lando, right? No. Okay, that's good. Yeah, it, it has more respect for Star Wars than the prequels do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The cutscenes are animated, though. Oh, they're not? But you'd think they would be animated because Rovio owns it's, an animation just, studio. Yeah, right. Huh, that's very weird. Well, maybe they were just trying to rush it out. Yeah, keep the file size low. Yeah. I don't know. Well, yeah. Uh, like I said, they might be trying to rush it out because that might tie in. Because that will tie into something we're going to talk about later in the show, I think. Yeah. Because, you know. But um, there's something about Star Wars sound effects that just fill me with this warm nostalgia. Yeah. <laughs> and I mean, and I mean, they're all original sound. I mean, they're the original sound effects because yeah. Skywalker Ranch has opened up. Yeah, I mean their library is free to use. I I could pull really? up, yeah I I could I can pull their their sound effects and put them in this show right now if I wanted to. Awesome! I didn't yeah. know that. Oh yeah, yeah they are. Yes, they have they have given free reign to their to their stock sound effects. You know, lightsaber. You know, X wing blaster that kind of stuff for any fan film or any kind of you know. Anything parody or parody whatever. or anything like that, yeah. So I mean, it's it's out there. You can get it. So, well, it looks like we're about a half hour forty minutes in, so we should probably that's, take a. Let's do a break. little pl- some plug-in first. Oh yeah, let's do some plug-in. Let's go. Let's uh, go to a- Advertisingville. Yeah, Cash Town. Cash Town, Money Moneyville, Cash Town, Moneyville. <laughs> Uh, the Amazon button. Yes. There's one on the website. Yes, there is. Just like the Nerdist sometimes, you know, Chris Hardwick's like, click the Amazon button. And we yeah. have that same thing. Yeah. They're so, not so special. We can do it too. That's right. You can click on it. We need it more than Chris Hardwick. That's right. He's a thousand air socialite. We need the money. <laughs> yeah. Don't don't click on Chris Hardwick's Amazon button. The <laughs> guy's a jerk. No, no, no. no. I like he's, the guy. I'm he kidding. He seems like a really cool guy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, no. Um, just you know, to kind of explain real quick, if you're going to do any shopping for Christmas or any time during or the year, or for Chris Hardwick, or for Chris Hardwick, yes, if you're you going to buy him a present, buy him some stuff. <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, what you do, you go to our site, you click on the Amazon uh, button in the corner, the top uh, right hand corner of the site. Click on that; it'll take you to Amazon. From there, just do all your shopping. Yeah, do you do, you do anything want. weird after that? Do you have to? No, no, nothing. You just click on that button. Takes nothing you to, weird. Takes you to plain vanilla uh, Amazon. Like you, like you just went there on your own. Do your shopping. Cash out. There's nothing special. No code. No promo codes you have to put in. Nothing like that. You don't have to put like promo code Pizza Man. No. No. Al- although if if we ever have to put in promo codes for anything, <laughs> it's going to be Pizza, Pizza Man. Man. Um, <laughs> when do we get the shop up? Yeah, that's right. That's right. <laughs> no, we can't put a discount on our stuff no. the shop because it's, it's going to be cheap. <laughs> it's going to be cheap anyway. Anyway, um, yeah, and so what What that does, uh, when you check out, a uh, small percentage of what of what you purchase 
um, the money that you purchase with will actually go back to help fund our site, help us keep the, the lights on, keep all the excellent content like this that you're listening to right now keep it uh, coming out which i i just repaid this for the site for another year and i just paid for a month of advertising so uh we could use it yeah we could it'd use be awesome money. if you could help guys could help us out because yeah. it was expensive yeah. and the best part about this thing is it's not going to cost you a dime it doesn't um it doesn't add any uh hidden fees or anything to your purchase it just takes a, a small fraction of what you spend? I, you were already going to buy that mask box set anyway. That's right. That's absolutely right. <laughs> mask is great. <laughs> it's a great show. <laughs> it was the most obscure cartoon I could think of off the top of my head. Hey, it's like trans- <laughs> it's like Transformers and GI Joe Put mixed together. together. So but. there you go. Go buy the mask box. I don't even know if there is. I'm sure there is a mask oh, box sure. set. Box, uh, Shout Factory. Put one out. They put out the best stuff. They do. They they license the best stuff. Shout Factory, everybody. Yeah. <laughs> Buy Shout Factory stuff. But don't forget, go to our Amazon.com link. Yeah. And use it. Not the nerdist one. Use it up. I mean, I mean, Chris Hardwick, he's on Talking Dead. He gets paid for that. Yeah. Okay. We do. do I have a TV show where I talk about my favorite TV show? No, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Although I, you know, I, you know, just totally off off topic. He does seem like a cool guy. Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah, I yeah. listened to uh, the latest Nerdist with um, Eric Idle, uh, Billy Connolly, Eric uh, or oh, Eddie Izzard, and uh, Sophie uh, something or other. I can't remember her last name. And um, great, great interview. I mean, I couldn't understand a word half of them were saying because <laughs> because they all have thick accents and they were all talking over top of each other. Last one I listened to was Zach Braff, and I'm like, oh, that guy's gonna be a dick. No, no, he was great. Yeah, he I was liked great. him. Yeah, <laughs> that guy's probably a douchebag. No, he's not. No, he's he's cool. He's yeah. a cool dude. But uh, anyway, Amazon.com. Go to our link. Get, uh, help us out. Zach Braff is surprisingly not a douchebag. <laughs> Moving right along in search of good times and good news With good friends you can lose This could become a habit Opportunity knocks once the tree chat and grab it yeah. Together we'll nab it We'll hitchhike bus or yellow cabbage Cabbage? Moving right along In this fancy free Getting there is half the fun Come share it with me Hey, we're back from the break. Break time over. Talk about some more stuff. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, do you have anything to... Was there something I was going to talk about? Uh, I imagine that's why we're sitting here in front of microphones. Yeah, right. Well, you know what, I'll, I'll start with something real quick, because I know everyone wants to hear us talk about the Star Wars thing. That's coming up, but I want to save that to the, for the last thing before we end the show, because that's yeah. probably going to be the big, big thing. And, you know, we got to get people to listen to the full show yeah you gotta get through the crap you, can't, you, you, you gotta bury the lead the, yeah yeah um no so i ran a quick article about this on the site um dc in february is launching a second justice league book that's the one with the 50 covers. yes with the 52 different covers <laughs> variant covers what one for with? each state plus one for washington dc and one for puerto, puerto rico. rico because everything in dc comics has to be 52, 52. Yeah. What is their obsession with Fifty Two? Well, you know they they did a uh, they did a series a uh, a handful of years ago called Fifty Two, and it was um, because there's fifty two weeks in a year. Oh, okay. And they did a, okay. they did a weekly series for an entire year because all their books made a year jump, and they used Fifty Two to bridge the gap for that year that they missed. Ah. Uh. And it went over really well, so they've started putting everything 52 into hey, everything that because, number worked that's uh hey yeah. new 52 <laughs> yeah exactly 52 covers that's exactly that's that's exactly it and um you know variant covers are okay i don't get a whole lot of them i only get well, the only time i get variant covers are when they are the kind that you have to you, you can put together and it makes one big panoramic yeah you know photo or if they're just they're by good artists yeah on a, well sure yeah but like I, if something had an Amanda Connor variant cover, mm-hmm. I would want that one. Oh sure. <laughs> oh, without a doubt. But uh, this fifty-two thing is overkill. Oh yeah. 
in the worst way. There is only the most obsessive and richest people will pay to get all 52 of those covers. I got to get the Nebraska cover. Yeah, like, right. Who cares? And I mean, I've, <laughs> I've seen, I've seen uh, teasers of, of some of them. It's the exact same cover. Just change the flag in Just the Just change the flag. That's stupid. Because it's, you know, like the, um, it's like, there's like a statue. I forget what war it's for, but there's, I think it's World War One statue. And, you know, it's like the, the three or four soldiers putting up the flag. <laughs> hoisting that flag, hoisting the yeah. Flag. It's, it's like um, Green Lantern, Green Arrow, Vibe, and Katana, vibe. like, hoisting, the fl- hoisting a flag, and... You know the flag is the only thing that changes, and the it's like the size the the size of the squ- of the triangle for the flag is too big for like a real flag, so everything looks just kind of off. <laughs> and it's going to be really curious to see how the Ohio flag works yeah, out because it's a pennant. Because it's a pennant, it's not a real flag. I, personally, I hope they leave a big, huge white square, yeah. <laughs> like a big white area behind it, because they're too lazy to fix it <laughs> to fill it in. Yeah, that's what I'm hoping for. But uh, it's overkill. And, I mean, variant cover is, as a whole is starting to become overkill because, I mean, hell, Boom Studios, a lot of their books, all of their books have variant covers. like five variant covers. And a lot of times their variant covers are printed more than their original covers. <laughs> a lot of times the variant covers are way better than the original covers, uh-huh. too. Yeah. And, I mean, it's, it's oversaturating the market. And, you know, the original idea for variant covers were you get one out of every 100 or 200 or 1,000 or whatever. And it makes them super rare so that stores can sell them at a higher price. They can make more money. They will become collectible. If every book has a variant cover, they're not it's as special. It's not special, yeah. It's not as special anymore. But, uh, but yeah, 50... 50- <laughs> what if they did a variant story? Yeah. <laughs> All the covers are the same, but you might get a you different get story. A different, yeah, right. No, yeah. Well, you know, don't oh, say that too they, loud because DC branch, will take it. They'd branch two different ways and uh-huh. you have two completely different continuities based on what so variant you to, story you, you check, got. You have to check which story you're getting yeah. every every month from then on out. <laughs> oh, I bought the wrong variant story. I have no idea what's Damn going it. on. <laughs> yeah. But no, uh, but, you know... Variant covers aside, I'm actually looking forward to the series because they have char- the characters in it. I am actually a little more, I have a more vested interest in than the current Justice League book. It's uh, starring uh, Martian Manhunter, Green Arrow, the new Green Lantern, which four, four issues into this new arc with this new guy, um, it's actually n- okay. I've actually kind of, I'm starting to warm up to Simon Baz, the. The uh, Iranian American. Yeah. I read half of the zero issue in, when we were in uh, Barnes and Noble yeah. the other day. It was pretty good. It's a, it's all right. I mean, it's, the first couple of issues were really heavy handed with the "Oh, you are a terrorist. We must <laughs> stop you." Nine eleven. Nine eleven. <laughs> yeah. No. This this newest one, he actually goes up. Uh, he actually meets the Justice League, and the Justice League, you know, go to, you know, bring him in because they think he's just he's a terrorist that has stolen Green Lantern's ring, and he's like. Listen, I don't know how I got this thing. Wonder Woman, you have a you have a uh, you know a lasso that makes me tell the truth, right? Here, let me yeah. hold on to this because I am telling you the truth. I don't know why there was a bomb in that car I stole, <laughs> and I don't know how I ended up with this ring. Batman goes to try to take the ring off him, and he's like, "Yeah, do it. Hey, go and, ahead." And the ring freaks out and makes a builds a car around Simon Bass and takes off. So so now the Justice League thinks he's, you know, escaping the law. Uh-huh. But it was kind of cool. The Flash is like, you can't you can't race me. You can't beat me. He's like, I'm not trying to. And he uses his ring to create a like a 14 car pile up oh, in front of the Flash while he like skirts through it in like this race car, like this green race That does car. sound really good. It's it's actually really good. It's actually the this newest issue is the first issue that I've read that is actually really good. The story around it is kind of bullshit because the Guardians of the Galaxy are assholes again. <laughs> yeah, they've decided that the Green Lanterns don't work, so they've created a third army. And the point is they are um They've created a race that, you know, like a, that spreads like a virus, like it reaches into yourself, rips out your heart and you turn into one of them. And it is to cut to stop all evil in the universe. They are uh, getting rid of all sentient thought in the universe by converting everyone into these mindless, you know, virus drones. It's kind of lame. Yeah. 
Um, but no, it's the the new Justice League has that Green Lantern. It has um, oh, there were a handful of others. Steve Trevor, um, who is a human CIA agent. Um, oh yeah, he's the guy. Yeah, he's Wonder he's, Woman. Yeah, yeah, he's the he's the guy. Wonder and, Woman's boyfriend. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, ex ex boyfriend. That's why. That's why he's on the opposite team now. Uh -huh. Yeah, I think Hawkman's in that book, and um, two characters that will be getting their own ongoing series, also starting in February. Katana, who has been a member of, uh, who has never had her own solo series, but has been members of uh, the Outsiders and uh, Birds of Prey. And it is not the chick from Mortal Kombat. No, no. <laughs> She's um, a, a little backstory. She's um, she has a haunted sword that That's requires cool. the souls of evildoers. And this new story, this new book is apparently, you know, she's going to be going up against different ninja and samurai clans, modern day ninja and samurai clans, all based around different weapons, like vi villains like the sickle and the nunchuck. The nunchuck. Yeah. Well, it makes sense because her name's yeah. Katana. And the other series, which I am both horrified and super excited to read, Vibe. Vibe. <laughs> Vibe is getting his own, se an ongoing series. I don't understand it's how. So I don't understand why. But all I know is that I, w I never thought I wanted a Vibe series <laughs> until now. <laughs> See him dance it, guys. Oh, yeah. Break dance it, guys. <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, he is, he was originally a former gang member from Detroit who has vague, turned sound into light powers who also who carried around a ghetto blaster boombox and a mat to cost so he can constantly be break dancing all the time all the time, all the time break dancing and was a terrible latino stereotype <laughs> yes <laughs> this new one he is a uh, former member of a you know cia project argus or something like that project dance <laughs> project dance off so you think you can dance yes He's a plant, and so you think you can dance a CIA <laughs> plant to win it? <laughs> yes, that's right. Yeah. Well, you know, you've seen the um, the DC Nation short. Yeah. Hey, everybody, my name is Vibe. <laughs> that's pretty much how he was in the <laughs> 80s. I can't wait. It's going to be great. I can't wait to read it. I just have been reading Amakami Girls. The oh, last yeah? one was terrible, though. Really? It was like... A stupid girl fight between Star Sapphire and Power Girl over Jimmy Olsen. Ah, fuck Jimmy Olsen. Who's who's Mister Amazing in this series? Oh, like geez. roving reporter, awesome guy. Mm. It, was, it was just dumb, lame. Yeah, lame. I don't want it. it's a stupid plot for a for a comic about lady superheroes <laughs> to be fighting over some <laughs> dude. Yeah, <laughs> well, you know, it was only a matter of time. Yeah. Yeah. But, uh, Let's forget about the cool stuff with the uh, blind Chinese Green Lantern girl. Yeah. And just do this stupid lady fight between Power Girl and Star Because, <laughs> <laughs> like, Green Lantern, Lady Green Lantern doesn't know whether to join the newly formed Lady Justice League or be property of the Chinese government. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, wow. I did not see that coming. <laughs> wow. Because the Chinese government is claiming that they own the ring because they own her because they're communists. Ah, uh, okay. Very weird. Huh. I didn't, I was not, I would not expect something like that out of, the, out of an anime kami. It's, it's comic. good. It's a decent series. Hmm. Cool. I might actually have to sit down and read read that. I never thought I'd say that. <laughs> Uh, all right. Do we have anything? I don't think else? so. Okay. Well, then we might as well get into the big news. Well, let's take Do a we... break first. That could be our third. Oh yeah, part. let's take a break first. Yeah. Okay. So uh... cut in some uh, some pony music. Okay. Pinkie Pie smile. Put that. Okay. In there. I'll do that. I'll do that. <laughs> you, you think I won't? <laughs> Or blue, Patty has cheering up 
And we're back from our for our final break. And usually, this is the this part of the show where we, you know, read our mailbag or answer some questions. But no, or just fuck leave. That. <laughs> yeah, or just leave. But fuck that. We're going to talk about something that we are, as of the posting of this article, about two weeks behind everyone else on. <laughs> In typical, we In extreme typical, typical, bad yes. Shit. Yes. Actually, the article that we wrote for it actually yeah, that went, went up, yeah, you put went that up, up went right up pretty, away. pretty quick. Uh, we are talking, of course, about the uh, Lucasfilm acquisition by Disney. Did I said that right. Yeah. Okay. So yes. So the big. So so the so the main th- um, swipe of it is, and I'm sure you've heard, you all have heard this about a million other places. Um, George Lucas has sold um, Lucasfilm. And the entirety of the it. The entirety of it. Even LucasArts, the yeah, game. LucasArts, Industrial Light and Magic, a whole shebang for $4.05 billion. Billion with a B. <laughs> yes, billion with a B to uh, Disney and uh, Walt Disney Company. And um, yeah, so – and this is a big deal. Yeah. This is a really big deal. It's like the biggest nerd news in years. Yeah. And um, along with – Along with the press release for the the purchase, they also kind of threw in, oh yeah, and by the way, we're gonna have a uh, have a Star Wars Seven out by 2015 yeah. with uh, new movies every two years after that from now until we get tired of putting them out until they stop making us bags of money. Yes, yes. Hello, telephone. <laughs> and we have a caller now. No, no, we don't. <laughs> I wish we did. If we had internet access in here, we could. Yeah. Talk to Jamie about getting a wireless router in here. Yeah. Anyway, uh, cut, cutting all that out. Yeah, if we bought one, <laughs> yeah, maybe. Anyway, uh, anyway, um, this is a big deal. This is huge. Uh, what What are your first react? What were your first reactions to this? First, I was uh, appalled. Really? <laughs> At first, I'm like, "What? Huh? What?" But then I thought about it for like you know a minute, and I'm like, "Wait, this is good." Because George Lucas can't mess up Star Wars anymore. Actually, he is still on as a consultant until yes, yeah, so that's always yeah. part of his writer. He's going to be a consultant, but he's not. He doesn't have a direct hand in. And people can uh, say no to him when he tries to do something stupid. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> and um, the stories for the movies for the next three movies at least did come from Lucas because that was that was actually part of the deal. That was the icing on the cake. For this deal, he had given he was giving them the treatments for seven, eight, nine that he had written way, way back when, for some other writer to flesh out and make a movie yeah. of. Which I read an article somewhere where his biographer said he had he had read seven, eight, and nine, mm-hmm. and that they're amazing. <laughs> yeah, I I don't doubt it. because because they were written by nineteen seventies George Lucas, so they would be amazing. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'll bet there's no trade embargoes in no. those treatments. No, right. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, I was uh, immediately just thrilled with it because, yeah, it gets it gets the um, the the company, the product, into the hands of people who truly know how to take care of who who truly care about you know Star Wars and yeah. stuff. And um, for all the naysayers who were like, "Oh, this is the worst thing that's ever happened." You know, it's everything's going to be all Mickey Mouse and Disneyfied and goofy and all this stuff. A few years ago, when Disney bought Marvel Comics, people were saying the exact same thing, and I, I was one of them. I was a little worried, but so far, Disney has kept a hands-off approach to Marvel, to Marvel Comics. Nothing has been dumbed down. Nothing's been kidified. Everything, I mean, everything has worked out. So I and I have. I don't have a reason to believe that Di- that Disney will take something that would make them a ton of money and purposely ruin it. Yeah, they're not going to do that. That's not good business. So it's it's I see it as nothing but a good thing. Yeah, when when I initially got upset about it, I then remembered that wait a minute, Disney hasn't really done a bad thing in a long time. Yeah, yeah, and I mean <laughs> it's and I mean they have they have the money to throw around. Uh, they're one of the things that came out with this. Disney makes around thirty-six billion dollars a year. Wow! The next closest company, Time Warner, which owns DC and you know everything else, yeah. twelve billion. 
Wow. Yeah. <laughs> Disney laps the next highest three times over. <laughs> and, you know, and, um, you know, there were a lot of things early about the greediness of Lucas. You know, $4.05 billion is a lot, is too much money for anything, you know, all this yeah, stuff. Yeah, but then he gave it all to charity. He, 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 gave, he gave all of his, all of the monetary to charity. He, see, he was paid half in uh, cash and half in stocks. Uh, Disney stocks. So he's keeping the, the Disney stocks, which is fine. That's a good retirement for a yeah. guy who created a one of the quintessential one of the one of the pillars of science fiction filmmaking in in our lifetime or anyone else's lifetime. Yeah. But yes, he gave like all of the cash to um um, education, education which means that no one can say another bad word about George Lucas <laughs> ever again. Yeah. Um but no, I think that's great. I think it's really great. Um, and the thing that people aren't haven't been talking a whole lot about, it's not just uh, Star Wars that Disney has acquired. They've also gotten the rights to Indiana, Indiana Jones, Jones, which means they can start pumping out Indiana Jones films again. That are hopefully better than Crystal Skull. Oh, my God, yes. Although Crystal Skull did suck after the fact, but watching it was still kind of fun. You know, I mean- it was it was okay. If they had found someone else to play Mutt. Yeah, I hate Shia LaBeouf. Yeah, Shia LaBeouf was a major down point to that. I mean, it, it seemed an awful lot like they're just trying to shoehorn. Okay, he's going to be the next Indiana Jones. Come on, let's, yeah. no. let's go. Nobody no. else needs to Nobody, be. Yeah. yeah. And um, speaking of uh, Harrison Ford and older actors, apparently Disney has already had talks with Hamill, uh, Carrie Fisher, and George, uh, yes. Harrison Ford before all this went down, and they've all signed on to be a part some oh. in some capacity Hell for the yes. for the next three tr- even if they're walk on cameos I'd be okay with that it, just have them in there to set up and pat you know pass the torch to whoever exactly you yeah. know yeah exactly I mean have have um, Hamill in there as you know the head of a new Jedi order training the next generation of br- building the Jedi back up he could be the freaking Yoda of new Star Wars exactly like- exactly and you know um, you can you know like like a lot of the uh, expanded universe stuff. For Star Wars, it deals with the uh, kids of Han and... Yeah. Um, they're twins. Yeah, they're twins. Have uh, Han and uh, Princess Leia in there for, like, a couple scenes. Have them be the the uh, Uncle Owen and Aunt Maru, only yeah. not get incinerated. Yeah, that would be That would be, that would be, pretty, that would be pretty bad. But, uh, yeah, I think it's great. I think it's absolutely great. I'm a little concerned about the um, the future of fan films because um, yeah, Lucasfilm has us- has historically been very open with their. In fact, we talked about it earlier with uh, the sound effects. Yeah, you know, I don't know if that's going to go away or not because Disney is pretty. They, they they lock down their their intellectual yeah, pride, yeah. properties pretty hard, and I'm also concerned about the future of Star Wars comics at Dark Horse Studios because yeah. so they've said for now for now everything's okay. Well, that's but... well that's what Boom Studios said when Marvel acquired was acquired by Disney. <laughs> it was not okay, and, and within about three months, all of their Disney property books, including Muppets, Ducktales, the amazing Darkwing Duck line. All were canceled and are now uh, being printed and trade through Marvel. So, yeah. so I don't know. I mean, they're they're licensed products. So even if Marvel does take them back, it's not like we're going to be losing any uh, like any storylines or any writers or anything. It just yeah. means you'll be giving Mar- Marvel Disney Marvel Star, Disney, Wars, Star Wars to yeah your th- your three bucks instead of Dark Horse. Yeah. So I mean. You know, you hate to see it go because they've been with uh, Dark Horse has, has been the Star Wars um, um, company yeah. for twenty years. I mean, it's it's a big deal. It's their thing. It's yeah. a lot. Yeah, it's, it's kind of their thing. Um, I feel like Boom Studios has been doing great though lately with, <laughs> with their, their, with their in, lights and stuff. Oh, yeah. absolutely! Boom Studios is an excellent. Um, oh, the company. Bravest Warriors comic came out, didn't it? Or is it next? I know the show did. The show did. Well, and it I, was good. Yeah. It was really good, Professor Fart Sparkle. Yeah. <laughs> I call this the Fart Sparkles effect. You should really find a different name for that. Yeah. <laughs> They're dead. They're all the dead. The bravest warriors are dead. <laughs> oh, yeah. But anyways, this is um this is a big 
this is a big deal. I mean, new Star Wars. I never thought we would see good new Star yeah. Wars. I've and said we have this the potential. Before, and I don't know if I said it on the podcast that Star Wars would get better when George Lucas was dead. And and this, this is kind of like him dying. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not like him dying, but it's so. We just it's found that episode it, title. <laughs> this show is like, it's like George Lucas is dying, <laughs> but like it's getting his hands, yeah. you know, off the property because he doesn't know how to do it right anymore. Right, right, and I mean, you know, that happens. It it happens with with anything that you kind of sit on for too long. You you yeah. know you you kind of let your your thoughts kind of run away a little bit too much, and you lose sight of you know what what you have. Yeah. Because you know, with the first first three films, he was he was a young he was a youngish director, uh, scraping together something. With these new ones, he was a an established you know, trying to overthink things. I think. Yeah, I don't know. Um, one of the other things that kind of came out with this, and this is a fair this has been a fairly recent thing, and it's at this point it's just rumor. But so far, any kind of rumor has been you know spot on. Yeah. Spot on. Uh, they uh, Disney is looking to acquire another. Major, uh, major company, which I don't know. It makes it puts them kind of getting close to kind of having a monopoly yeah. over over certain entertainment things. Entertainment monopoly, yeah. children's entertainment, and that is uh, Hasbro, which, from a business standpoint, makes absolute perfect sense. I mean, they have all of their Marvel characters, they have all their Star Wars characters. What do they need to to make maximize the cash out of them? A toy, toy company. company. Yeah. So uh, that. The, the unforeseen side effect of that, of course, would be um, they would also acquire the rights to Transformers, G.I. Joe, <laughs> and My those, Little Pony. Those sweet, sweet ponies. The sweet, yes, those sweet <laughs> Make ponies. those sweet, sweet pony dollars. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, you know, a handful of other things like Battleship. They'll, yeah. they'll get the rights to Battleship, both game and movie. <laughs> Transformers. They yeah. can make a non Michael Bay Transformers movie, yeah. which would be great. That would that would be great. <laughs> I hate so, those movies. I know, I know. But uh but no, that's that's kind of that's that's gonna be interesting and only time will tell whether or not that's going to Pixar uh, Pony movie. That's yeah. what we need. What I'm waiting for, I want something with Sam and Max. Yeah. Because Sam and Max is partial is it partial owned? No, they don't own Sam and Max at all anymore. Oh, okay, well then maybe that's not going to yeah. maybe that uh, won't happen. It, the rights reverted back to Steve Purcell who works at Pixar. Okay. Well then, so well, there it's, you go. it's kind of possible. It, yeah. it is possible. And you know the 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 next the only other thing that I thought like one of the first thoughts I had when I saw this big thing happen, you know, the big Disney buyout of Lucasfilm was that you know they they own Lucasfilm. They own Marvel. They are setting themselves up for the most kick-ass Howard the Duck movie yeah. <laughs> ever. <laughs> uh, seriously, that was one of the first thoughts I shot through my head. They could do they it. They could. They could do it. So you can put him in the Avengers. Yeah, there we go. Yeah. <laughs> hey, you know what? He is one of the few heroes from Ohio. Howard the Duck is set in Cleveland. That's right. Yeah, both, <laughs> both comic and movie. He is Cleveland's hero. He would be. Yeah, he would be. Yeah, yeah. It's true. Now, they should make a, a Monkey Island animated movie. That would be cool. That would be cool. Now, if 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 uh, if Disney acquires Hasbro, what would happen to the Lego licenses? Oh. Because um, Hasbro's Lego version At is Creo. is Creo, the Lego bricks that just don't quite fit with the Lego bricks. <laughs> They're just a little bit off. I feel like it seems like lately maybe one of Lego's patents expired or something that let people make more knockoff Legos or yeah. something. Yeah, because, I mean, they have the Creo and then the uh, the Connects are starting to look more like Legos. Yeah. Either that or they just finally realized, you know, that's kind of the best way to do building toys. Yeah, that's true. Uh, yeah. Although well, Legos jumped back in popularity, too. It was mm -hmm. not as popular there for a while. And then the games came out and people started getting back into them again. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, I've always liked Lego. So. Oh, sure. Oh, sure. Me too. But uh, but no, big things, big things happening for for the nerd community with this. Yeah. And only, you know, I I think it's I think it's nothing but a good thing, and I think that um, 
with Star Wars right now, they have all, the only place way to go is up. Yeah. What do you think is going to happen with the Clone Wars uh, cartoon series? I don't know. Because it's on Cartoon Network, yeah. which is a Warner. I'll bet that's going to be gone. I bet it. I bet it gets transferred to over Disney XD or something. I bet that the series is going to uh, wrap up within the next couple years. Yeah. And reruns will be played on Disney XD. What about um, that Star Wars sitcom? Well, not sitcom, but like adult show. That oh, the the, li- the live action show. Yeah. Um, if it if it happens, I mean they have a they have a TV s- a station set up perfectly to run it. Yeah. Because I mean put it on a- ABC. ABC is also Disney. Because I mean this made me get into you know what all Disney owns. ABC, ESPN, <laughs> you know. I mean, will they play Star Wars on Spike every weekend? <laughs> see, that's it. I don't. Well, it would maybe because Spike is uh, a Fox. Oh, and, and Fox and Disney kind of. No, no, actually, uh, the the reason why is because the original the original three trilogy, the four, five, and six, were co-produced by Lucasfilm and and Twentieth Century Fox, Fox, which is why we might not see the you know one of the things I saw come out of this was oh man we're finally going to get the unedited version of the original uh, series Star Trek no, Star we're Wars never going to get that we may not because um, the original unedited or seventies version uh, is partially owned by Twentieth Century Fox and I don't know if Fox and Disney. Yeah. You know. I was watching uh, Comic Book Man the other day, even though I don't care Why? for that show. Why? Because Comic nothing, Bros? Else, nothing else was on, okay. and I was waiting for The Walking Dead to come on. Ah, uh, okay. And somebody brought in the laser discs of the first three yeah. Star Wars. And I'm like, I kind of want those, because yeah. it's the highest... Well, what, did they, what did they... Not a whole lot, because yeah, nobody has a laser disc yeah, player right, to play them. right. But, uh, I mean, it's the highest quality print of the original movie yeah. you can get see i i have an old uh ced player a select division player they're like old records they're like like literally yeah, they're, they're that, like big plastic records with a with a sleeve that you have to actually pop in and out yeah and i have the original star wars of that i mean it, oh, cool. it is it is so original it doesn't on the crawl it doesn't say episode four wow mm-hmm. uh it is not a very good copy because because they're like record, big thick records on the inside, they scratch very easily, oh. and they have skips and dust all over the inside of them. Uh-huh. So you get to like the um, the assault on uh, the Death Star, and it just starts jumping all around all over <laughs> the place. It's too much for it to handle. Yeah, but uh, I have the VHS of the original. See, I have the I have the re-release with the Leonard Maltin openings. Hmm. Yeah, they did a uh, re-releases uh, of the box set when I well when I was a kid. And uh, before every episode, every every film, uh, Leonard Moulton interviewed George Lucas. That's kind of cool. It was actually yeah. really cool. And I mean, it was. I mean, this was pre-internet, so I mean, all your star, a lot of your Star Wars knowledge came from those pre those pre-film interviews. Yeah. I mean, it was the first place I was able to. I was the coolest kid on the playground when I said that. You know, in Star Wars, Chewie was originally supposed to be an Ewok, <laughs> and the Ewoks, the Ewok planet Endor, was supposed to be. You know, a bunch of a bunch, bunch of, Wookies. of Wookies, yeah. And they had the idea. Well, why don't we take three teddy bears, teddy and, bears, stack yeah. them on top of each other, and make them a Wookie? Yeah. I was the coolest kid in school for about two days until everyone <laughs> discovered girls. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I have like the really, really old box set that I found at Goodwill. Really? Yeah. Wow awesome and then i have one of the the one that they released right before they did the special edition one so oh cool okay see i i have that box set and i still have and i have the dvds that um they put out at walmart with the um the original or as close to original as they're go- as you're gonna get yeah cuts as a second disc with no special features on them that's and that's okay i mean they're like the they're the uh, um Retouch. They're they're the VHS retouched versions. Uh-huh. So I mean, they don't have like the you know CG Banthas walking around in the background for no reason. And, they don't have that scene yeah. with Han Solo and Jabba, do they? Uh, no, no, no. Although it's it's a special feature on the uh, on the original disc. Um, one thing I I re- I discovered. Do you know why they don't put out the originals? Why? Uh, because uh, this is, I mean, part of it is because, you know, George Lucas has never liked the original is because he wasn't able to tech. Technically he wasn't able to do everything he wanted to do. Yeah. 
which is probably a good thing. Yeah. Um, but part of it is because his ex-wife was an editor on the original trilogy. Oh. And if you, uh, she would be getting, she would get royalties because because of those edits. <laughs> But if you change enough little things here and there, it doesn't become her edit anymore. Uh, so that he just doesn't want her to get the money. Yeah, oh, that's, man. that was part of it. That's part. That's at least part of it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. George Lucas is a stingy bastard, and that's why we can't get original Star Wars. <laughs> bitter. Yep. Bitter old man. Yep. You see that? Well, his neck waddle. That's just bitterness. <laughs> a neck waddle of bitterness. <laughs> okay and with that yeah. i think we're gonna go ahead and wrap up for the evening because we have run out of things to talk yeah. about and we're how long was this one um well we're at an hour and a half now with editing it's probably going to be about an hour nice that's yeah, about so that's, perfect that's, that's good yeah so uh yeah let's let's do our rundown real quick of where we can find our find our shit <laughs> <laughs> pizza extreme team.com yeah yeah that's our website it hopefully is. you know about it yeah <laughs> you should. I mean, I don't know how you got this otherwise. I mean, I guess iTunes. Yeah. But why well, would you be looking? Trying to find a pizza podcast. Yeah. Sorry, we didn't talk about pizzas. Yeah. Uh, if that's what you were looking pizzas for. Pizzas are delicious. Yeah. We do enjoy and, them. And uh, if you were expecting a podcast about pizzas and didn't get it, I don't know why you would have waited this long. Yeah, right. <laughs> um, but we're glad you did. Yeah. Uh, you can also find us on Facebook, facebook.com slash pizza extreme team, twitter.com slash pizza extreme team. And uh, you can find me online at uh, Robot Caveman on the Twitters. And on the Twitters, I am at PXT, unders- it's underscore, right? Yeah, underscore, underscore Cody. Cody. Yep. And uh, that's about it. That's oh, about and it. you can read my webcomic. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Tales from Retail Hell at TalesFromRetailHell.com or RetailHell.PizzaExtremeTeam.com. Which everyone's working at the yeah. moment. Which I think they both work, but uh, yeah. RetailHell.PizzaExtremeTeam.com seems a little strange. Stabler. Yeah, it does. Well, I, I I have some work to do on the on on that side on that page a little bit. Wow, I really stuttered that last sentence, didn't I? <laughs> good good lord! I think it's time to eat and yeah. and drink and have a time. <laughs> have a time. Have a time. Every, have a time, everybody. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So uh, so yeah, for Pizza Extreme Team, I'm Sam. I'm Cody. And for the missing uh, the MIA Samantha. Yeah, we'll pour one out for her. For our homie. Um, yeah. Our Lady Holmes. Pizza out. Pizza out. <laughs> Lady Holmes. Lady Holmes. <laughs>
Bum 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 bum. Dun 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 dun. Dun 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 dun